Alex, and uh, for those of the who are wondering, who are tweeting this meeting and are wondering what the hashtag is, stop it, pay attention to what people are saying, <laughs> um, put, uh, put your phone away. Um, so Natalie Bennett from the Green Party. <laughs> very much for not using your time to take a pop at the Green Party, uh, or maybe maybe a little bit, but there, was, there were a couple of challenges in there which I'm not going to take up at this moment to start off with, I think that there are issues that will come up later. Um, I want to focus instead on the positive vision that the Green Party has and how much we're finding on the doorstep and in hustings and around London, how much that is catching people's imagination. First of all, I may be somewhat less well known than, than my speakers, so to introduce myself, um, I'm number four on the Green Party list. Um, we have always had a minimum of two Greens elected on the list. We have had three before. Last time it would have taken 12.2%. I think there's an outside chance that I could be a London Assembly member on um, uh, next week, but I'm not holding my breath about it. My background, uh, I've been a journalist for the best part of 25 years. I was, until a couple of weeks ago, the editor of The Guardian Weekly, mm -hmm. uh, The Guardian's international edition. Uh, I've actually given that up because after 20 odd years of reporting the news, it just became so depressing that I've decided that I want to spend my time trying to change it, if only a little bit. So uh, I've kind of full-time politics and books and all that sort of stuff. So that's, and if you're wondering about the accent, it is Australian, so you don't have to sit there wondering about that. <laughs> uh, but, I have, but I have been here for um, about 12 years, and before that was five years in Bangkok. So don't ask me questions about neighbours anymore because I don't know the answer. <laughs> So I'll thank Alex for not including in his criticism of the uh, manifestos for London, the Green Party one, because I think we do have a very good manifesto. One of the, the things that I'm most excited about it in it is the London living wage and what we want to do with that. Now, many people may know that the London living wage actually exists because Greens on the Assembly pushed Ken to do that, to create the unit that sets that figure every year uh, a few years ago. But we want to go much further and create a living, pa a, a, a living pay mark so a bit like on the principle of fair trade, and basically say that any, the TfL, the police, the fire brigade, anything that's controlled from London will only deal with companies that have the fair pay mark, that pay all of their staff, and very importantly, all of their contractors, at least the London living wage. Now we all know how, how people use outsourcing as a way of avoiding decent standards, and we want to create this, set this as a standard that says, if you want to claim to be a corporately social responsible company and all that sort of stuff, you should have a living pay mark. And if you haven't, why not? And we won't deal with you until you do have that. And we want to make that, set that the standard and say to any other company, you should be doing that as well. We've also got really good policies on housing, which of course is a huge problem in London. And given that the, the uh, Tory government is now reinstituted full right to buy, um, mm. we're not so much supporting council housing anymore. We want to look very much towards co-ops and community land trusts. As a, as, as a way of ensuring that social housing stays social. So I think we've got a very solid manifesto, but there's one part of the manifesto which I've found in really, really different groups of people causes a lot of excitement and a lot of interest. And in the last day or so, I did a hustings at the, um, well, it wasn't really a hustings, I had to meet the residents of a Salvation Army homeless hostel just down the road in King's Cross. And I did a hustings out in Tottenham that was a rather interesting mixture of the Latin American community and the Federation of Small Business, which made a rather curious mixture. But with all of those people, there was one policy that just made everyone's ears prick up and people go, wow. And that is the Green Party wants to abolish the corporation of the City of London. Mm. Now, it's really interesting because actually most people have no idea at all of what the corporation of the City of London is. And when I start to tell them, as I'm about to say in a minute, they get very, very, you know, exercised about all of that. But what we've got there is a policy that immediately says we want to change how things work. We've been controlled and run by the financial industries for far too long for the benefit of the rich and we want to change things. Now some of those things that as I go on to talk about that people get more and more exercised about is the Corporation of the City of London is kind of democratic. There's 9,000 residents in the city and they all have a vote, as you might expect. But there's also the businesses in the city, and the businesses in the city have 24,000 votes. 9,000 votes, 24,000 votes. And most of those businesses are financial industries. So that means the Corporation of the City of London is controlled entirely by the financial industries. And it won't surprise you to, he to hear that the, uh, the Lord Mayor of London says on his website that his aim in life is to support financial, financial liberalisation and the financial industries and the, city and the City of London as a financial centre. More than that, there's a guy called the Remembrancer. This is where it gets really arcane and really interesting. 
this is the only person, or man, it's only ever been a man, who's allowed on the floor of the House of Commons, who's not an MP. He can wander around the floor of the House and as the debate's going on, whisper in MP's ears. And possibly even more importantly than that, he uh, can also see all legislation as it's being drawn up. So the financial industries are having the word in and all the drawing up of the legislation that's happening. Now, you know, the manufacturing industries don't have that. The nurses don't have that. The old age pensioners don't have that. That's a simple example of the influence of the financial industries that are having over, uh, over our lives. And you know, the Green Party is uh, the only major party, I'm not, I'm not sure about if Tusk has this in, in their manifesto, sorry, but certainly the only party that has representation that's saying we want to abolish the corporation of the City of London and just make it a normal part of London just like everywhere else and take out all that special financial interest. And that is the kind of policy that I think we, we're here talking about a London Spring. That's the kind of policy that we can actually present to people and say, we want to make a difference. And people just get that. You really want to do things really very, very differently. And, you know, I think that's all possible. And so what we're also doing is we're looking at some other issues like that. And I'm a chair of Camden Green Party, and we're putting out literally tens of thousands of letters in across Camden. And what we're talking about, you know, we talk about our stuff about our London Manifesto and the good stuff in that. But the sort of things we're also talking about are tuition fees. We're the only major national party that wants to have zero tuition fees because we believe that ed education is a public good and that if you're going to pay for it, it should be paid for from the wages of high-earning people and you should be able to go to university and then take an important but possibly low-paying job and not have that huge spectre of debt hanging over you for decades. We talk about the Afghan war and how we'd like to bring Britain's troops home from Afghanistan immediately because it's clearly a failed war and there's you know, deaths occurring every day of Afghan civilians, of Afghan women, children, of, and of British combatants, which really simply needs to stop. Uh, we talk about the fact that we don't believe Britain should have nuclear missiles. And the interesting fact is, on doorsteps up and down Camden, and I'm talking about you know, from Highgate, which is a pretty posh kind of area, down to here in Somers Town where I live, you know, all of those things on the doorstep, you find practically no one disagrees with, very, very nearly no one disagrees with. And yet we are the only political party that's saying these things. We're the political party that went into the last election with a fully costed no cuts manifesto that, that we actually added up. And I know that it actually added up because um, I was part of one of the people who drew it up and Channel 4 went through it with a fine tooth comb. And this was the first time the Green Party had ever had a fully costed manifesto for a general election. And I'll admit to actually doing a fair bit of fingernail chewing because you know when Channel 4 is going through your figures, you, you think they add up, but you're a bit worried. Uh, and um, the good news is that the manifesto added up. There was a, no, a, a plan for things like bringing the 50p tax rate down, started a £100,000 income. There was a plan for cracking down on tax evasion and tax avoidance and taxing multinational companies more. It was all there, it was all costed and added up. And you know what happened? Channel 4 didn't do a story because mm -hmm. the fact that it added up meant that there was no story to be told. So, you know, what we have to do is create those visions, and that's what the Green Party does do, is create a whole rounded vision of a different kind of society. And we have to do it the really hard way, because there's no easy way for us to reach the people out there. We have to get out there on the doorsteps, get out there, deliver letters, get the, deliver newsletters, do all the traditional political stuff, but do it while delivering a very different image, a very different politics, and a different kind of society. And that's what we're offering to London, and we're finding the Londoners we spoke, speak to like very much is a vision of a very different kind of society and that's what the Green Party is asking you to vote for us on May 3. Thank you. Thank you.